Hello again. Welcome to a special mini episode of You Have My Word. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something very important you should know and practice as a spoken word poet. It's something that is often taken for granted, but it shouldn't be. Why? Because it actually makes a difference to the lives of people. So, today's subject is appropriation. Don't worry. It may sound complicated, but actually it's very simple. All you need to do is pay attention to this video and always be careful of what you write and perform as a spoken word poet. So, what is appropriation? Well, the Cambridge English Dictionary defines appropriation as the act of taking something for your own use, usually without permission. Would you do this in your day-to-day -day life? Of course you wouldn't. It's not nice to do it and so it can cause a lot of distress to the people who are affected by your actions. What we need to understand is how does appropriation work in spoken word poetry? Usually it happens when a poet who comes from a place of privilege or power takes the voice of someone less privileged or less powerful than themselves and speaks about that person's experience as though it were their own experience. For example, if you're not disabled but perform in the character of a disabled individual or if you're not someone with mental health problems, but write and perform from the perspective of someone who has them, that is appropriation. To understand this better, let's say that you've gone through a very disturbing experience. And then you go to an open mic and you find a poet performing a spoken word piece about your experience, even though they don't know what it feels like to you. How would you feel? You wouldn't be happy about it, right? And what's more? It might disturb you even further. Okay, I know your next question. How can I know if the poem I'm writing is a form of appropriation or not? That's a very good question. Well, here's what you should do if you're ever in doubt about this. Ask yourself the following questions. 1. Is your poem about or in the voice or the perspective of someone who comes from a lesser privileged part of society than you do? And do they have less or more power than you to speak up about their own experiences? 2. Are you speaking in first person about the experiences of a person you've never met in real life? And 3. Is your poem supporting or using stereotypes and making comments on a situation that you personally know less about because you haven't experienced it yourself or don't personally know anyone who has? If you answer yes to any of the previous questions, then yes, it is appropriation. But don't worry, there's an easy way to avoid appropriation in your poetry. How? Well, one of the ways is this. Speaking in support of a vulnerable or less privileged individual or community in the third person is better than making their experiences sound like your own in the first person. And if you really must write and perform about their situation or their experiences, here's what you can do instead. 1. Do your research. Talk to the individuals about whose experiences you're writing. 2. Seek permission from the representatives of the community you're writing about. 3. The safest option, of course, is to write in the third person instead of in first person. For example, instead of saying, it's hard for me to live this way. Say, it seems hard for them to live that way. And best of all, if you can, and best of all, if you can, empower individuals and communities who aren't as privileged or powerful as you are with the skills of poetry and let them write, perform, and share their own story in their own words. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, is what appropriation is and how you can and should avoid it when you perform your spoken word poetry. Well, that's it for this episode. I'll be back very soon with episode 3 of You Have My Word.